Welcome Tyler ISD students, parents, and patrons as we explore your journey to graduation. In 2013, the 83rd legislation passed a historic education reform bill in the state of Texas known as House Bill 5. House Bill 5 provides greater flexibility in choosing a pathway to graduation. This presentation will introduce students and parents to the many opportunities available to them in their journey to graduation. During the student's eighth grade year, parents and students will be informed about the graduation plans, endorsements, and pathways offered by Tyler ISD. In Tyler ISD, each student will start their graduation journey on the Distinguished Level of Achievement Plan. The Distinguished Level of Achievement Plan is required for a student to be eligible for the top 10% automatic Texas college admission. Also, entrance requirements will vary from college to college. The Distinguished Level of Achievement Plan contains the requirements of most Texas colleges, including Algebra II and other related coursework. Let's take a closer look at the Distinguished Level of Achievement Graduation Plan. The Distinguished Level of Achievement Plan is similar to the traditional 4x4 graduation plan that students and parents are accustomed to. The Tyler ISD Distinguished Level of Achievement Plan requires four years of English language arts, four years of math, four years of science, and four years of social studies. Tyler ISD is requiring that both chemistry and physics and both world geography and world history for the Distinguished Level of Achievement Diploma. In addition to the core classes, the Distinguished Level of Achievement graduation plan will require one credit of physical education, two credits of a language other than English, one credit of fine arts, half a credit of health, half a credit of speech, and five electives that must lead to at least one endorsement for a total of at least 26 credits. It is our expectation that almost every student graduate from Tyler ISD with a Distinguished Level of Achievement Diploma. Because of the flexibility of House Bill 5, Tyler ISD will also provide two other graduation plans that will lead to industry certification, military service, or other post-secondary college goals. Let's take a look at the foundation plan and endorsement plan. A student who graduates, graduates on the foundation's graduation plan will be required to take four credits of English language arts, three credits of math, three credits of science, and three credits of social studies. In addition to the core classes, the foundation plan will require one credit of physical education, two credits of a language other than English, one credit of fine arts, half a credit of health, half a credit of speech, and five electives for a total of 22 credits. With a few additional courses, a student can earn the Foundation Plus Endorsement Diploma from Tyler ISD. The student must earn one additional math credit, one additional science credit, and at least two of the electives credits from the endorsement coursework for a total of 26 credits for the Foundation's Plus Endorsement graduation plan. Many students will easily be able to earn two or more endorsements during their four years in high school. Students in Tyler ISD have the potential to earn at least 32 credits. Tyler ISD will offer four endorsements, Arts and Humanities, Business and Industry, Public Services, and Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, known as STEM. In the eighth grade, students, parents, and counselors will work together to choose one of the four endorsements that best meets the interests and needs of each individual student. Once an endorsement has been chosen, that student will choose a specific pathway within that endorsement area. Tyler ISD will offer over 30 pathways that lead to four-year universities, two-year colleges, industry certification, high-wage jobs, or military service. Let's examine some of the specific pathways that Tyler ISD will offer students. If a student chooses to earn an endorsement in Arts and Humanities, he can choose from nine pathways. Some of the pathways will automatically lead to two endorsements because the coursework will overlap. There are 13 pathways that will help a student earn a business and industry endorsement. A student can choose the pathway that best meets her educational and career goals. If a student is interested in a public services endorsement, he can choose from five different pathways within that endorsement. The STEM endorsement offers six different pathways. It is important to note that a STEM endorsement requires Algebra II credit. A student who earns a STEM endorsement can often earn another endorsement concurrently.
Because endorsement and pathway requirements will be different from district to district, Tyler ISD will offer the multidisciplinary studies endorsement for students who have coursework from a variety of endorsement areas. If a student in eighth grade will be put on the Distinguished Level of Achievement graduation plan, she will choose an endorsement and a pathway. The graduation plan, pathway, and endorsement can be changed later in a student's high school career. Under the new graduation plans, students and parents and staff will start early on the journey to graduation. In the 8th grade year, 8th grade students will actually start earning high school credit. Most students will earn at least a half a credit for speech through avid classes or exploring careers. Some students may decide to take Algebra 1 or a foreign language during their middle school years. Each 8th grade student will also take an interest inventory through a program Tyler ISD uses called Career Cruising. This entrance inventory is one piece of information that can help students and parents make endorsement and pathway decisions. In 8th grade, students and parents will choose a pathway that will lead to one of the four endorsements. Based on parent and student input, the 8th grade counselor will design a distinguished level of achievement graduation plan that will follow the student into high school. Students and parents will choose the courses for the student's ninth grade year during the fall or early spring of their eighth grade year. In ninth grade, a student's freshman or ninth grade year, she will pr probably take an introductory course called a principal's course based on the pathway she selected. Since each college and university now has different acceptance requirements, it is highly recommended that students and parents start during the ninth grade year researching the requirements for the college or university of interests. Students will also need to pass the end of course exams. Most students will take Algebra 1, Biology, and English 1 end of course exams in ninth grade. During the ninth grade year, counselors, parents, and students will review and revise the graduation plan. Students can change their endorsement in their ninth grade year if needed. When a student reaches 10th grade or a sophomore year, it is time to start making firm decisions about what he will do once he graduates from high school. Students need to prepare for and take the pre-SAT in October of their 10th grade year. Students will also need to pass the end of course exams. Most students will take English 2 end of course exams in their sophomore year. A sophomore also needs to start researching scholarship opportunities and entrance requirements for the college or university of his choice. There are usually college fairs and other events that will help students and parents with college research. It is important for parents and students to meet with the counselor at least once per year to review his graduation plan and course schedule. In a student's junior year, she needs to prepare for and take college entrance exams. If she didn't take the PSAT her sophomore year, she can take it in the fall of her junior year. In the spring of her junior year, the student needs to take the SAT, ACT, and or the TSI, Texas State Initiative, assessments. Check with your school counselor. Sometimes students qualify for these assessments at a reduced rate. Students will also need to pass the end of course exams. Most students will take the U.S. History end of course exams in their junior year. Students should start visiting the college or universities of their choice in the spring of their junior year. This will give the student and parents an opportunity to ask about entrance requirements, financial aid, and scholarship opportunities. Students can also start preparing their resume for college application. It is highly recommended that students take the most rigorous courses available during their high school career. Students should consider dual language or advanced placement court classes in order to build their college resumes. In the junior year, it is most important that parents and students visit with the counselor at least once to review the graduation plan and courses needed for the desired graduation plan. The senior year is a time for students to enjoy the fruits of their labor as they get ready for the big graduation day. It is highly recommended that students take dual credit coursework during their senior year, even if they have not been involved in advanced placement courses in prior years. Students need to start applying for college admissions and scholarships early in their senior year. It is best to request transcripts and letters of recommendation before the end of the year rush. Each student entering a college or university also needs to fill out the FAFSA, Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This needs to be completed in the spring semester of the student's senior year of high school. Let's review a few of the most common questions 
regarding the new graduation plan. What is the difference between the old Distinguished Achievement Program and the new Distinguished Level of Achievement? The main difference is an extra year of foreign language. The Old Distinguished Achievement Program, or DAP, required three years of foreign language, whereas the new Distinguished Level of Achievement requires only two years of foreign language. My student entered high school prior to 2014. Will he be on this old graduation plan or the new graduation plan? Students who entered high school prior to 2014 will be given the choice of which graduation plan they want to graduate under. Tyler ISD is recommending current juniors and sophomores remain on their existing plan. Students who are currently ninth graders can easily switch over to the new graduation plan to benefit from the wide variety of pathways offered by the district. Parents of current ninth graders need to discuss all of their options with their counselor to make the decision that is best for their individual student. May a student switch from one endorsement to another? Students will choose their endorsement in eighth grade. They can easily switch endorsements in ninth grade. In tenth grade, an endorsement can change also. But by the end of their tenth grade year, it becomes increasingly more difficult to make endorsement changes. Once a student reaches 11th or 12th grade, he or she may graduate with a multidisciplinary studies endorsement if a change is made. May a student earn more than one endorsement? In Tyler ISD, students have the potential to earn 32 credits from 9th grade through 12th grade. An endorsement diploma only requires 26 credits. So there is plenty of room for a student to earn another endorsement. Also, some pathways will automatically lead to two endorsements because the courses overlap. Must a student graduate with an endorsement or the Distinguished Level of Achievement Diploma? It is highly recommended that a student graduate with an endorsement or two because it will lead to post-secondary education or job readiness. Under what graduation plan must a student graduate in order to be considered for the top 10% automatic admission rule? Students must graduate under the Distinguished Level of, of Achievement graduation plan in order to be considered for the top 10% automatic admission rule. What are performance acknowledgments and how can students earn them? Performance acknowledgments are additional acknowledgments that will be noted on a student's transcript. Two examples of performance acknowledgments are biliterate or if a student qualifies as a National Merit Scholar. There are many resources available to students who need additional information. The websites for the Texas Education Agency and Region 7 Educational Service Center have parent resources. Keep in mind the TEA approved graduation plan is slightly different than proposed plan for Tyler ISD. District resources are available with Tyler ISD. We are working to help parents and communi community members understand the new graduation plan. There are meetings scheduled March 24th at 6 p.m. at John Tyler High School, March 25th at 6 p.m. at John Tyler High School, April 7th at 6.30 at John Tyler High School will be the Spanish only meeting, April 14th at 6 p.m. at Hubbard Middle School, and April 15th at 6 p.m. at Dogan Middle School. Tyler ISD will continue to post updates to their website in English and Spanish. Once the board approves the final graduation plan, the course selection guide and grading handbook will be updated with the new information. Both of these documents will be posted on our website. The school counselor is the most important resource when deciding on the graduation plan that is best for your student. It is important that parents and students sit down and discuss the graduation plan with their school counselor at least once per year. Because the graduation plan is new in the state of Texas, it is imperative that parents and students contact their college of interest to determine the specific entrance requirements for the different college and universities. We encourage you to talk to your student. Counselors, teachers, and colleges will be providing information to your student during the school day. Be sure to ask your student questions about the information and check the school's website frequently to gather information. The students of Tyler ISD will be afforded tremendous opportunities as they choose graduation pathways that best meet their individual goals, strengths, and needs 
Please call your campus counselor if you have any additional questions regarding your student's high school graduation plan.